What's up everybody, Phil here with another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to spec out a deep learning PC on a budget. So this is motivated by the question I got on my earlier video on whether or not you should buy or build your own deep learning PC, in which I came out pretty strongly in favor of building your own. A viewer asked, hey, I'm a graduate student on a budget, how can I build something? Also, how do I assemble it? Well, first of all, let's get this out of the way. I don't have the bandwidth to support uh, tearing down my PC and then reassembling it for the purposes of an instructional video, but there are many other videos here on YouTube, one of which I will link in the pinned comment down below from a channel called Bitwit. He's a, he does gaming builds. It's, it'll give you everything you need to know to put together your own PC. But here I will help you source and pick out parts. So what you're going to need is the following list of parts. You will need a processor, a motherboard, RAM, storage option, you will need a video card, you will also need a case, power supply, and cooling solution. To be fair, most CPUs come with a cooling solution, by which I mean a fan or an all-in-one water cooler. Most processors will come with that, so that gets taken care of by the decision of which CPU to buy. So the most important components in this build will be the PC, sorry, will be the CPU and the GPU. Um, and of course, everything else will fall in place around that. So let's start with the CPU. So for a budget of $1,000, Intel is really going to be too expensive and really not worth the extra premium given that most of your workload is going to take place on the GPU anyway. The exception to, the exception to this is when you have to do some pre-processing where uh, it will generally be use, generally be single thread limited, uh, but you can do some tricks to make your operations uh, multi-threaded, which I can show you in a later video. And cut down uh, something that took around 15 hours down to mere minutes for me. But the processor I I recommend is the uh, AMD Ryzen 2600X um, from AMD, and that is the six core 12 thread processor. So don't get too hung up on clock speeds here because you can't really compare clock speeds between generations and certainly between architectures between Intel and AMD. Reason being that they have vastly different what's called IPC instructions per clock. So the CPU can stuff a certain number of instruction through each, each hertz. So it doesn't really do much to compare. Although a good rule of thumb is that at present, Intel is ahead by around 10% clock for clock. So not really a big deal when you're doing deep learning stuff. So this processor is um, six cores, 12 threads, decently fast for what you need to do, and it's at a decent price. So the next question you have to wrestle with then is what motherboard to get? And that is a great question. So I've had experience with a few different brands. So I typically lean towards Asus branded motherboards. I've generally only had positive experiences with those. I'm currently running a Gigabyte motherboard uh, that was a pretty big pain in the ass at the beginning. So the Intel Skylake X architecture originally needed a patch right out of the gate. It needed a microcode patch uh, for it to work properly because there was a some sort of bug that caused instability issues in a limited number of workloads. Well, of course, one of those, <laughs> one, one such limited case workload was plotting data in Matplotlib. So every time I would plot something, the computer would crash instantly. In Windows, it would blue screen, and with Linux, it would just straight reboot. Uh, and so I bought this setup in November of 2017, and then it was January of 2018 before Gigabyte finally got around to issuing the microcode patch through the BIOS. Uh, so since then, it's been reasonably stable, but that is kind of a uh, black mark on their permanent record as far as I'm concerned. But I've never had any issues with Asus motherboards. So I'll go ahead and go to my cart here to show you the precise board I picked out. And... Um, so this isn't an endorsement of this board in particular, it's just that this board came in a combo with the CPU. And I've had good experience with Asus boards. It's got some pretty RGB LED lighting, kind of like my own PC. It'll light up in your case, look pretty. That's not really important, but whatever. Um, it will support the CPU. It has support for enough RAM. It can support up to 64 gigabytes. That's a little bit low, but for most purposes, that's going to be sufficient for what you want to do. There are exceptions, but you can typically work around that if you are willing to wait more time. So I picked out this board because it's reasonably full-featured. It will support the RAM, support the CPU, and it's from a brand I particularly trust. If you've had experience with other brands and you trust them, by all means, go with those. Um, not a huge deal. So the next question is memory. So 
the quantity of memory and the speed of memory is the important thing. So uh, for a deep learning PC, I'm going to say go with something like 32 gigabytes at least. Reason being, if you're doing deep queue learning, for instance, you have to store many, many memories. This can eat up a lot of space. In my recent video on coding up a deep queue network, it took up something like almost 50 gigabytes of RAM, which is quite a bit. So 32 wouldn't quite cut it, but you can always cut down the memory size and do some other tricks to reduce memory consumption uh, to kind of get by with what you have. But in general, the more the merrier. Uh, so for a thousand dollar build, you're going to be limited by 32 gigabytes. You probably won't be able to go above that without sacrificing on other fronts. So 32 gigs of RAM speeds, something like the 3200 or the 3000 is perfectly fine. You won't really notice a difference in real world usage. Far more important is the choice of GPU. Now I'll just show this. So I spec something out and with 32 gigs of RAM, I come in at around $1,000, 104388. And that's with a 500 gigabyte SSD, a little bit low, um, an extra, yeah, two 16 gigabyte kits of, of memory, the 2600X, the motherboard, and next up is the video card. So you have a few different options. So we're in kind of a funny time with picking video cards. The Touring series, the RTX series, is too expensive in my opinion. This is a Touring non-ray tracing CPU, GPU, sorry, uh, the 1660 Ti. So this comes with 6 gigs of RAM. So RAM for gaming isn't a huge concern, but for deep learning it actually is. So this only has the capability of accessing 6 gigabytes of RAM. So what that means is you can only load up so many images at once. So if you're doing vision, six gigabytes may not be enough, but if you're doing other stuff, six gigabytes may be enough to get you by. Uh, but the point is that this is a reasonably solid GPU for a budget build for someone who doesn't have a whole lot of money. If you are willing to stretch a little bit, then there are other GPUs that are probably better. So let's go ahead and find it. It is somewhere here. So for only a little bit more money, you can get the, so that was 290. For around 360, you can get the RTX 2060. So this on paper only has six gigabytes of RAM. However, the Turing architecture has what are called tensor cores. And those tensor cores allow the GPU to actually access twice as much RAM by going from 32-bit precision down to 16-bit precision. So if you're a uh, if you're into doing like hydrodynamic simulations or simulations of climate or something like that, then you're going to need the 32-bit precision, but for deep learning, 16-bit is more than enough. And so by spending a little bit more money, you can get something like this where you get a nominal 6 gigabytes, but by storing data as 16-bit instead of 32-bit, you can actually access 12 gigabytes. That's a handy little trick. It doesn't work in all cases. It is especially useful for images because you don't need huge precision for screen images, right? Or JPEGs, PNGs, whatever. Uh, it doesn't work in all cases and it is heavily dependent on the context in which you are using it. Uh, so the 2060 or the 1660 Ti are both good options. Unfortunately, AMD is not yet really a player in this space. So they have decent enough GPUs, but the software really isn't there. NVIDIA has been pushing their CUDA Compute Unified Device Architecture stuff for years, since about 2008, when they came out with the first uh, uh, CUDA compliant video card. And AMD really hasn't been pushing it that hard. They've been using OpenCL, uh, which is functional, but doesn't have the, the same ecosystem around it. So while AMD makes decent enough video cards, they just don't have a significant enough software support. Unless you're willing to experiment with things like transcompiling the OpenCL code to CUDA, I'm aware that that is a possibility. Never tried it. I just go for the path of least resistance. Uh, but if you want to support AMD, then by all means, go right ahead. Their GPUs are fine. It's just the software really isn't there. So two options for GPU, the 2060 or the 1660 Ti, both are reasonably decent. The 2060 will be faster and allow you to double that 6 gigabytes into 12 gigabytes for certain, for certain workloads. Next question you have to address, 
And one that is critically important, actually, I'm not being ironic here, is the power supply. So you must never cheap out on power supply. That is the one thing you cannot cheap out on. Uh, you can get cheaper memory. You can get a cheaper SSD and be okay. You can even go with uh, a brand like Zotac for video cards and be fine. But you cannot cheap out on the power supply. And I had a friend who built a dual Titan rig. So he had two Titan GPUs from the prior generation, but still Titan class GPUs, $1,000. So two grand in GPUs. And he stuck in a cheap ass Rosewell power supply. It was called Hercules and it said 1300 watts or whatever. Every time he loaded up a load, that thing would straight reboot every single time without fail. He could never get through even a single epoch of training on those GPUs using that hunk of junk power supply. Set it into Rosewell, went out to Best Buy, bought an EVGA, which is a fine brand, brought it home, and it was, it's was it been rock solid, stable ever since, even though it's an 850 watt unit versus the 1300 watt from Rosewell. So don't buy Rosewell, buy only reputable brands. Corsair and Seasonic, in my opinion, make the best power supplies in the business. I've been running uh, Corsair power supplies for years, never had a single issue with it. Um, and I think they, they source Seasonic, so Seasonic is pretty much the same thing, and either one is going to be fine. EVGA works as well, uh, but do not cheap out. Don't buy uh, no-name brands. Buy a good, reputable brand with a strong warranty, uh, and you can also look up reviews. So power supply, most critical. It can zap your components if you buy cheap. GPU, next most critical, because that's where the most of your workload is going to go. RAM and CPU are Next down on the list for criticality in terms of what you need. Uh, and then finally, you come to the case uh, and storage. Let's do storage first. So um, I would almost certainly argue you should get a solid state disk. This is a combo. The di the SSD is at 180 bucks. It's only $70 for a 500 gigabyte or 120 for a terabyte. That's a little bit pricey. You can get cheaper brands. Like I said, you can you can cheap out on SSD and be okay. Just make sure to back your stuff up in case something goes wrong. I have had drives fail. I had a SanDisk fail after a couple years. Sent that in for warranty replacement. That was no problem. Uh, I, I uh, had backed up all of my really critical stuff, so there was no real, no big loss there. So SSD for storage. Uh, mechanical hard drives offer more space, but they're slower to transfer data. I would just opt for the SSD. And finally, the case. Now, cases are kind of a tricky subject. They're a matter of two things. You have the Pareto trade-off between how they look and how they cool your components. So um, you have to do a trade-off between those two. I kind of like, you've probably seen in some of my videos where you can see the side of the case, see through the side of the case, you can see the motherboard, GPUs, all that good stuff. Um, but I've had really good experience with all things Corsair, so I tend to recommend their products the most. This doesn't look like it has very good front cooling, but it may not be a big issue. Maybe the door opens, I'm not sure, but it has some pretty LEDs on it, and the case is really the kind of the least critical, but one where you can screw up, so my previous case wouldn't hold my motherboard. Uh, it simply wasn't enough space, so you kind of have to be a little bit careful there. Other options include... So all these parts were brand new. This build comes out to 1043, uh, a little over 1100 if you opt for the 2060, uh, RTX 2060. Um, uh, there are other options. If you're willing to buy used, then eBay is a great place. Uh, I haven't checked, but you can get, let's see how much 1080 Ti's are going for. I had one of these for a long time. Uh, so it's probably well outside the budget of a graduate student, still too expensive. GTX 1080, let's see how much that runs. So that's about as much as the 2060, uh, RTX 2060, so around 380 or so. A little bit more expensive. Um, this one says it was mined on. You want to be leery of that. Uh, some miners were very careful, undervolted their GPUs, and it was fine. It would be no big deal, uh, but you, you never know. Of course, if they're advertising it as being mined on, they're probably fine. Uh, so the three, the, tw the 1080 is another option. That's a great video card. It gives you eight gigabytes, but doesn't give you the capability to double the RAM because it doesn't have the tensor cores that the new Turing architecture has. This is the Pascal architecture. Uh, this is a really fast card, really good card. I had a 1080 Ti for years, for a couple years, and that was a perfectly great card. Um, so that's another option. You can also buy older Intel CPUs if you want. Uh, so the Haswell architecture was great. Uh, 
Um, Skylake is fine. Um, but if you want to go new, you're almost certainly going to have to go with AMD for that price range. Next thing to consider is how to select parts. So this is PC Parts Picker or PC Part Picker. It's singular. Uh, this is a great site for, I think, checking out compatibility between stuff. And this specs out a very similar build to what I had. Uh, it's about the same amount of money uh, and has what looks like uh, more storage but less RAM. So that's a trade-off you can make. I wouldn't make that trade-off. I would definitely go with 32 gigs of RAM for a deep learning PC. So uh, the moral of the story is that your CPU and GPU are the most important things. For $1,000, you're going to want to go with an AMD CPU, you're going to want to go with a mid-tier GPU with the 6 to 8 gigabyte range. If you can spring a little bit more money, you're much better off getting a faster GPU, but if you're on a hard budget, the 1660 Ti or 2060 are perfectly fine GPUs. Unfortunately, AMD isn't really viable in that space, although their CPUs are great, so get an AMD CPU, NVIDIA GPU, that's a winning combination. RAM, you're going to want 32 gigabytes. Storage, you're going to want around a terabyte. Oh, and the Cooling, you don't need this Cooler Master Cooler because the Ryzen CPU comes with its own cooler and that works perfectly well. So, uh, final th final note is don't cheap out on the power supply. Go with a brand like EVGA, Corsair, Seasonic, and you should be fine. I hope this has been helpful. I'll leave a link down in the description for the video on how to actually assemble this stuff because it can be a little bit intimidating, but if you played with Legos as a kid, then you can assemble a PC, I promise you. Hope this is helpful. Share it if you found it helpful. I'll see you all in the next video.